All right, so today I'm going to take you through a couple of things. So I'm going to go from Hedge for doing data transfer into Resolve for sort of managing the rushes and creating proxies that can be used with Avid or other software. Uh, I'll pull things into Avid just to show you that, and then I'm going to jump into Flow. Um, from edit share and show a little bit of that which we have hosted in our flip platform um, So it's completely cloud hosted um, And then we'll go back into resolve and connect to the master rushes uh, So a sort of full round-trip workflow uh, So let's just kick things off here All right, so in Hedge, uh, what I'm going to do is jump into the preferences and then I'm going to just set this up with my normal sort of naming structure, uh, which has year, month, date, um, and then also just check that checkpoint is on so that it will check source read errors. Uh, then jump in and set your input files and where you want it to go uh, and hit go. So that's nice and easy. Um, and then once that is all complete, you can jump over to DaVinci Resolve, uh, open a new project, and pull in your source files. Um, so if I just point myself to wherever I popped those, uh, here we go. And if you do that and create bins, um, so it will use this, the, the folder naming structure to create the bins. It just helps keep things all organized. And I'm going to use this bin structure throughout the whole process. So um, this is nice and easy. So if I jump quickly into my projects, you can see I'm not doing anything fancy. Um, and under general, I'm gonna do one little setting, which is to change this to source clip file name. It uses the conform options in the file creation for proxy files. So it's worth uh, figuring out and testing how you would like to manage that. Uh, if you select all the bins together, uh, you can see all the clips contained in all of those bins combined, and then just create a new timeline using all of those clips. So if we do that, all, all these settings actually don't really matter too much. Um, we're going to be outputting everything as individual clips, so how, how we do this doesn't really matter. But one thing that's important, or you know, if you want to use color management, um, you can jump in and set that. Uh, so that you can set these clips to have their proper input display transform or uh, input color space, which they call it under Resolve Color Management. Um, so if you go and set that, obviously because of the dynamic range on these shots from the Blackmagic um, Pocket Cinema camera, um, they uh, all look blown out. And so I'm going to do just a really quick little pass just to get everything sort of into um, the Rec. 709 space. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. So once that's all done, we jump into deliver and in the deliver page, we're going to use individual clips, uh, set that to OP Atom, which is Avid's um, flavor of um, MXF that he uses in its database. Um, you can obviously use render at source resolution, but we're going to use um, 720p just because we're making these for offline. So uh, it's just going to keep our data usage down a little bit in this case uh, and obviously there's advanced settings in there should you need to dial into those um, under audio we're going to um, choose same as source uh, and 24 bit um, just to kind of keep everything the same flavor throughout and use source file name for the naming convention and the, a really helpful little thing is down here if you do preserve source directory levels when you do that it will then keep everything you render out in the same fold structure as it has currently. I'm going to just put that up to 15 just so you can see that really easily. Uh, and then I'm going to set my directory. So jump in here um, and this is just setting where my files are going to go. So I'll just make a render folder, set that off uh, rendering. Okay, so once that's completed, I can jump out of Resolve. I'm, I'm done there for now, so I'm going to quit that. Um, and then uh, just to show you the organization and um, how this all works within Media Composer uh, in terms of getting the files in and working with them. So if you've got editors running um, in uh, edit suites on Media Composer, they can sort of jump in uh, and obviously organize this however you like. But just to make this really clear, I'm going to keep everything in the same sort of folder structure as I've created. So in here you can see my renders and you can see that it's completely created 
the same exact folder structure as to where the source files came from. Uh, so this then I'll replicate uh, in this instance within my Avid project. So I'll create a folder and then uh, all the bins within that um, so that it's very obvious if anyone's looking for anything where it is and what it is. Um, so uh, if I copy these renders, um, I'm actually um, going to, yeah, so if I just go through and quickly name these up identically, then I'm going to copy those files over into my Avid Media Files folder. Uh, and by naming the folder, so copy the name of the folder, name it um, with the name of my computer so it generates its database, uh, and then sort of jump through and re rename it back. I'll, I'll get rid of these files as well just to make it a little bit clearer what's going on here. Um, but yeah, I'll quickly go through and set those uh, names, and then I can open all these bins and pop the clips in, and you'll be able to sort of see that um, my media is then within Avid and also at the finder level um, and throughout this whole process is following this really simple naming structure. Um, usually these would just be card names but um, these, this footage I have um, taken from the Blackmagic website um, just because I thought it would be a nice stuff to sort of a nice bit of footage to showcase and I can't really use footage from anything I'm working on so um, I thought that that was a good thing to do, and thanks Blackmagic for the footage. Um, so yeah, if I open up a new sequence, create that here, and you can see I can I can chuck that media in um, fr uh, from uh, this Media Composer project, uh, and use that throughout here, um, and crack on editing as you would expect, and, and all of that will will run um, as you would expect it to. So I'm going to jump out of Avid, that's that's all I'm going to touch on with, with Avid. Obviously you can do various things with metadata and all the rest of it in that too. And you can also do the same workflow, cutting in Avid and conforming back in Resolve. Okay, so now I'm going to upload all this footage to S3, um, which I'm going to do via transmit. So if I chuck that all in there, that's going to all upload very, very quickly um, because it's nice and compressed now. So in the control panel, um, I'll show you where the storage is. You can see that my S3 bucket is mounted. Um, and if I go into scan, I can set up a new job here, but first I will check the proxy settings so I can tweak those if I want to. Set up a new job to scan that drive or bucket. Uh, and I'm gonna create proxies and delete anything that's on there that I don't want, or that's been removed. So that then you can see the history there and how that runs. So there we go, once that has gone through and created its proxies, I can then jump into Airflow. And you'll see on, um, I've got no bins in here currently because I've not created them, um, but I have my storage in place here, uh, which is the media. So if I sort of replicate that same folder structure um, for the sake of this, um, again, to just kind of make it really clear what's going on and what's happening where. Um, at the moment, I will just copy that folder name and add that in here and I will do the same for all the bins. Cool. Uh, and then now from the storage I can then organize this um, these clips within my project. Um, so I can of course organize that however I like and add sub clips and, um, and all that sort of stuff which can all be done within Airflow. Uh, and then I'm going to make a little sequence uh, and you can see once you have created a sequence and named it, then um, I can then uh, start pulling files into there. And um, again, I could be pulling them in from sub, sub clips or um, going through and, and using the filters as well up above is, is handy um, in terms of how things are organized. So, but anyway, for the sake of this, I'm just trying a few things in really quickly. Uh, and so that's my project sort, sorted out, but I'm going to jump into Flow Story now. So Flow Story is the desktop application that is also connected to that same cloud storage, but working locally on my desktop rather than via a web GUI. So it's obviously a bit more advanced and has more advanced editing tools. So I could completely cut my program uh, or whatever I'm working on in here um, via cloud-based footage. Uh, and then I can take it back to Resolve. So if I go into here and go import um, AAF, um, in this situation I'm going to be using an AAF from Flow Story. Um, 
but you can do XMLs and things like that and do FCP XML, uh, Premiere, all the rest of it, that's all fine. Um, so in here I'm going to say don't automatically do clips but link to source camera files and I'll also I'll name the, um, the sequence um, just to keep it clear. Um, and I'm not worried about the frame rate stuff. And within here, this is where I would choose where my media is. So if there was folders I, or bins I wanted it to ignore, I could switch switch them off. But in this case, I'm just gonna say, look at all of them. And we're all conformed. So um, I've now got my sequence back into Resolve, linked to all the full res, um, I think 4K media, all of this stuff. Um, and uh, all ready to go. So then the next thing is obviously um, in the color page if I wanted to have those same um, sort of basic grades that I'd, I'd done earlier on in the um, proxy stage, I can switch these over to use remote grades. And then if I set the sequence to also use remote grades, uh, then it's automatically gonna pick those up. So I don't have to do anything manually for that and it's all kind of ready to go. Uh, yeah, I got through it. Um, hopefully that is uh, an enjoyable thing to watch. And um, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, the uh, equipment that I'm using is supplied by CraftKit. Um, and uh, if you want to get in touch with us about anything, so you can talk to the guys at CraftKit regarding equipment. Uh, they also do flow servers if you want locally hosted servers and also can put you in touch with me if you want to look at cloud hosted uh, options for flow. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope this has been of some help. Thanks.